Friends, would you join us in this morning's call to worship? Lord, you have been our dwelling place for generations. From everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love. So that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Let your work be manifest in your servants. May your glorious power shine through us. Let the favor of the Lord be upon us. May God prosper us for the work of our hands. Friends, let us worship together. It's not just a state of mind when your heart touches mine. Hallelujah, Lord, I believe. I know it's not a fantasy when your spirit speaks to me. Hallelujah, Lord, I believe. Oh, sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah. Sing 
in remembrance. In remembrance of Jesus the Christ. In remembrance of the one who was and is and is yet to come. We remember this morning on this All Saints Day of 2020, those who have gone on before, who have joined the great cloud of witnesses, those who we, uh, those who came before us that pointed to the love of God in Jesus Christ, who in their lives inspire us each and every way to continue the call, the call to sainthood, to a ministry and the priesthood of all believers. And so this year, we light candles in memory, in uh, love of Steve Jones, of Nancy Wilson, Kathy Wilson Bennett, Pat Collins, Joanne Koval, and all the saints who have gone on to their eternal rest. Might the lives of the saints continue to guide us in our work of grace, love, hospitality, and compassion. Good morning, Zionsville. Please join me in a posture of prayer. Dear God, we thank you for another day. We thank you that you have allowed us another chance to gather again today. God, we lift up all of our concerns, our prayers, our burdens to you this morning. God, we ask for a fresh wind, a fresh word, a fresh renewal of your word, God. Please allow us to feel your presence this morning. Please guide us and lead us to where we should go, God. God, we pray for everyone who is suffering um, in our cities, in our communities, in our country, and in our world. God, as it gets more and more tense, um, as we see more and more division in our country, we ask that you would be with us. We ask that we would be on the right side of your justice, God. And we ask that we would be the hands and feet of Jesus as you have called us to be. God, we pray for everyone who is still affected with um, still being affected by the virus. We pray for those who are suffering from the virus. We pray for those who are family and friends and nurses and doctors who are also witnesses too and seeking to heal those who have been affected by the virus. God, we pray for our children. We pray for teachers. We pray for principals. We pray for um, leaders who have to make hard decisions in the midst of this double pandemic. God, we ask that you will be with us in this double pandemic of not only COVID-19, but also um, racism and police brutality. God, we ask for your word to settle with us this morning, that we may encounter you in a new and holy way. All these things we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, would you join me in the spirit of prayer and meditation? 
Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try and see if there is any destructive way in me. If you find something, when you find something, remove it from me as far as the east is to the west. Cast it into the sea of forgetfulness. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O God, you are without a doubt our rock and our redeemer. Holy Spirit, do thy will, do thy will, Holy Spirit. Pray these and all things in the name of Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. It is William Shakespeare who in Act 2, Scene 7, Line 139 of Shakespeare's pastoral comedy, As You Like It, that a melancholy Jacques begins a monologue with these famous words. He says, All the world's a stage, and all the men and women merely players. They have their exits, they have their entrances, and one person in his or her time plays many parts. Author Wes Vanderloot ponders the question that if this life is a drama, if all of the world is a stage, what is the drama in which we are performing and what roles or parts are we playing it? If we are called by God, friends, in that, uh, in the words of the great theologian Robert Weber, if we are doing things for God, then we are at best stagehands in this divine drama. What is a stagehand but someone who works behind the scenes, points beyond themselves? A stagehand, everybody knows that a stagehand is not the star. A stagehand's role is to keep the light and the focus shining on the star so that the star can be seen and heard, so the star of the show can be recognized. And friends, one of the troubles, as Otis Moss III points out, is that the, one, of the, one of the issues, particularly in, the light of ch- in, 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 in church life, is that we're all stagehands and sometimes we forget that we're n- not the star of the show. But our job is to keep the light shining on the star, to keep pointing toward he- uh, faith hope, and love. This is the role that Paul reminds us of in his letter, for his letter, only letter to the church in Philippi, to the Philippians, is that he reminds us that if we are, if we are, uh, if we are anything more than uh, stagehands, we are mirrors called to reflect a real quality of life through mutual love and affection, through sharing in the Spirit, through unity in essentials, through our lives of humility, putting others first, to live in Christ. If we are anything more than stagehands, friends, we are mirrors reflecting faith, hope, and love as seen and recognized in the life, ministry, death, and resurrection of Jesus the Christ. We are stagehands shining the light upon Jesus as we reflect our own faith, hope, and love, as we reflect Jesus' life to act, to live in ways that mirror Jesus' humility to the point of humiliation, our service to the point of risking our lives, and obedience, to live in obedience to the point of losing and ridding ourselves of our own self-interest. This is a kind of street theater And this kind of street theater involves or requires audience participation. 
Friends, this life is not practice. There is no dress rehearsal to life. This is not rehearsal or dress rehearsal for the hereafter. This is God's action in the flesh invading our world, catching us up into the saving works of God, making us participants, actors in this divine drama. No longer spectators, we are part of the spectacle of God. In a world of self-preservation and self-promotion and just plain selfishness, with so many people striving for power undeserved, we surrender our lives, offering ourselves up as living sacrifice in the model of Jesus. That in the hopes that uh, we might Uh, reclaim our caretaker status to direct God's gifts in ways that are faithful, hopeful, and loving so that when we offer and extend ourselves in the name of Jesus, people see beyond Tyler or uh, Larry that individuals see Jesus the Christ. And so it beckons and calls for a brand new commitment to the assignment to which we have been given. That in all we do, we sing, teach, preach, speak, and hear truth in a world that echoes falsities and lies. That we serve giving ourselves away in a society of self-preservation. We do this because our lives are bent toward God. Our lives, all that we could ever want and hope, bent toward the one who is above and beyond and even within each and every one of us. What do people see when they see the work of Zionsville Christian Church, I wonder? What does our community see when they see us as a congregation or members of our congregation, whether it be in our own personal lives, at the store, or uh, in mission and outreach service within our community? What do they see when they drive by our homes, knowing in a smaller community like ours where we live and to whom we belong and to what congregation we find belonging? What do people see when they see us? I can't help but wonder in this stage that we call life in the world. It's Fred Craddock who tells a story of one who would become the governor of Tennessee many decades ago, Ben Hooper. And Dr. Craddock tells the story about how a young Ben Hooper was walking, uh, was walking into congregational life in a church one Sunday morning. And on the way out of church that morning, little Ben, no more than six or seven years old, little Ben who had been, uh, had been bullied nearly his entire life because He was a son, a child without a father. In this era where Ben was growing up, he was given a hard time because people would call him an illegitimate child. And he heard people all around him in that sanctuary on a Sunday morning saying, oh yeah, that's that illegitimate boy, that's so-and-so's son. He doesn't know who his dad is when through the crowd leaving the sanctuary on that Sunday morning, young Ben felt a heavy hand upon his shoulder. Ben turns around and notices that the heavy hand on his shoulder is from the pastor of that congregation, in Laurel Springs Christian Church. He turns around and he sees the chiseled, bearded face of this pastor, who's both handsome, striking, and intimidating all at once. 
And he heard the pastor as that pastor glared into little Ben's eyes. He said, I know who you are. I know who your daddy is. Ben, who was so used to being picked on and humiliated his entire life, was waiting for now the pastor of Laurel Springs Christian Church to make fun of him and to take a quick jab, to which Ben had already acknowledged that here we go again. This is yet another church that I'll never attend again. And what Ben heard changed his life. Ben heard that pastor say to him, boy, I see the resemblance. I know who your, who your parent is. I know who your dad is. Why, it's God. I can see it. There's a striking family resemblance. In all that we are, in all that we are becoming, both in the life of this congregation, is the family resemblance of our Jesus the Christ, our family resemblance, is that recognized within our community? I would like to think so through the hundreds of dozens of cookies that have been uh, enacted through uh, a service alongside of Shalom House. I would think that that's true through the ongoing commitment that you have to bringing uh, this being a movement for wholeness in a fragmented world and even in a fragmented community. That through conversations and through preachings that uh, Minister Alexis Tardy and with your uh, service and with your uh, voices and with your ears, I would like to think that part of that being a movement for wholeness in a fragmented community is speaking of the truth of God's justice, the truth of God's love in public. Friends, we have done an amazing job this year. Thanks to you, our outreach and the ways in which we live and move and find our being in our community continue to be poured out from our doorsteps to the ends of the earth. It's noticed, it's recognized. Even in these seven to eight months that we have been worshiping at home, our community still recognizes Zionsville Christian Church as being a church on the path that is full of love, that is hospitable, that is inclusive. A church that when they see how we love, they see the love of Jesus. I'm excited about what 2021 holds as we continue to live in faith, hope, and love. And I am encouraged with, for all of the ways in which we might continue to resemble our Jesus the Christ. Friends, it is not our glory that we're pursuing, but simply to um, understand that our ministry that is shared, a ministry rooted in values that God might recognize as God's own, is that we not elevate ourselves, but we continue to lift high the cross that we continue to make Jesus the center of all that we are and all that we do. See, friends, this life of stewardship, of self-giving, it's not about us getting the glory. It's simply the hope that what we will do will point to the source of all gifts. It's the hope that whatever God entrusts to us will reflect God's divine grace, love, and mercy. I cannot wait, friends, to see how we offer up our time, our talents, and our treasures for 2021. And I can't wait to hear members of our community continue to tell that long, historical, 184-year story of how we practice the love of Jesus in our community. For each of you that contribute and participate in this life-giving ministry that occurs from 120 North 9th here in Zionsville, thank you from the bottom of my heart. You make ministry all the more powerful, all the more beautiful. Let's look to 2021 
And let's be, let's consider how <coughs> Jesus <coughs> may be known in us and through us. Friends, thanks be to God and all of God's people, the people whom God loves, said, Amen and Amen. Have you ever forgotten your role? Have you ever stepped on toes trying to get to the top? I know I have. And the phrase ultimately that calls us back is, know your role. Know your role. Admittedly, standing behind this table week in and week out and inviting it can be overwhelming, and I could forget that though I am giving an invitation to come and to bid and to dine, the invitation and this table are not mine. I am not the gatekeeper of this place or this space. It is an extension of Christ's hospitality. It is Christ's invitation, for just as the Apostle Paul, I hand on to you what has been handed on to me. It is Christ's invitation to come and dine. As Frederick Beekner says, that grace is this. Grace is there is a party and it is not complete without you. Friends, come. Come, Christ awaits, for I do hand on to you what has been handed on to me, that it was on the night before Jesus showed the most full extent of his love, he gathered with his disciples, accepting Jesus' invitation to the table, that he took a loaf of bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples He said, take and eat all of you, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he gave thanks for the cup, and he gave to them, and he said, This is the cup of the new covenant which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sin. Just as Jesus is giving himself away, we are giving ourselves away through this cup of love, and we drink. For as often as we eat of the bread and we drink of the cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes, and we celebrate the transformation and resurrection of all things. Friends, let us feast together.
now may the Lord watch between me and thee while we are absent one from the other. This we ask in Jesus' name. Friends, God loves you. I love you. Let's love one another. Amen. Thank you.